beautiful friends. I'm back, vlogs are back, videos are back. I am so happy to be here making this video for you. It has been a minute and I really, uh, <laughs> I really relate to butterflies right now because I feel like I became the proverbial goo in the chrysalis and now I am coming out, I am spreading my wings. I got more affected by the pandemic than I thought. Um, in my way to be affected by it, a lot of people dove into work, I dove out of work, I dove into friendships, dove into learning, and I just really felt like there was this huge metamorphosis that was going on within me um, and I needed to honor that. So. That is all and well. I am back now, um, <laughs> ready to share. And I feel like whatever, Kristen, you knew before, that was a caterpillar. I'm a butterfly now, honey. And I'm excited to get to know you even better. And today is a special one and it's near and dear my heart. It is 20 things that I've learned in my 20s. When I was 20, I was like, I'm no longer a teenager. Like, I can't be reckless, but you know, we're gonna go through my list and you see like I really hope that you're still like pushing limits and taking risks in your 20s too because you know it's not all responsibilities and uh, I've had so many rewards from the risks I take um, so we're gonna get it let's just get right into it it is the value of compounding interest and the value of investing I was really lucky when I started earning a lot of money that I was able to have a personal banker that was giving me investment advice right off the bat. And the biggest thing that he got me to do was to set up these auto transactions into a separate account out of my total savings that started to get put towards investments. So things like index funds, mutual funds, that was the split that I did in my early 20s. And honestly, I did cost averaging, so every month I would put a max amount that was equivalent to my tax-free savings account for Canada. Um, I think it's an Roth IRA for the United States. And so this was an amount that every month was getting invested, no questions asked, and I would just, it would happen automatically. So I'd go back into my account and I would see like my money had grown and it was becoming really profitable for me. So I really want, if you're in your 20s or just entering your 20s, make sure that you're paying attention to compounding interest. I wish I had put even more in then because um, I would just be enjoying it now. Do it for yourself later. You will not regret it. All right, just because someone else has done it doesn't mean you can't. Okay, that specific thing, if you're inspired to do it, has never been done quite like you. And the world needs more storytellers, more creators, more people bringing their own energy into the fields that they're inspired in. So if you're inspired to do something and you see that someone else is already doing it, whether it's me making videos right now or some other space, like, it has not been done by you. Do not let that be a reason for you not to do it. Go for it, try it out. You're gonna meet people along the way, you're gonna learn things along the way. So whether it pans out successfully, you know you're being successful by what you're learning and the people you're getting to know along the way. Okay, the importance of understanding the waves of life. My dad tried to explain this to me so many times when I was first starting streaming. And it was just all about the cyclical nature of life. You rise, you fall, you rise, you fall, you rise, you fall. And now I compare this to kind of like the waves terminology where a wave is crashing on the beach and then it slows down, it pulls back, builds momentum, builds up, moves forward. Um, and now that I'm at the end of my 20s, that has definitely been a pattern that has followed me in my relationships, followed me in my work life, followed me in my financial life, followed me in my energetic life and my security of self and my love and my happiness life. Um, and so it's just so important that when you are in those moments that are your peaks, you know, you really are taking moment to have gratitude for it 
and acknowledge it for what it is and um, acknowledge it as temporary is like hard as that is to do if you're on like a, a winning streak or if you're making a ton of money or if your relationship is just so perfect you are going to reach a point where things get more challenging and it's just causing you to rise and to learn and in those moments my mom calls it getting ready to get ready so when i have those moments whether it's like an, a depressive episode or frustration in a relationship or not earning as much money as I want or having as much growth in my business as I want. I just know that that's temporary too. And it's just so important to recognize that <laughs> when we're happy, we know we're not gonna be happy forever. But when we're sad or going through something, we feel like that's gonna last forever. So just reminding yourself, there's a cycle to life. Both sides are important really learn how to cultivate the most that you can out of both and ultimately the pain of being in those low points uh, comes from your resistance towards surrendering to it and seeing the positives and being grateful for that time to slow down and uh, recalibrate. All right, so this one's for the ladies, and I think this is important for guys too, because if you want to date women, if you want to be friends with women, this is something that affects us all the time. I changed my life so much when I learned how to track my cycle and track my rhythm and track my moon, um, and just recognizing that you know my period isn't something that's been cursed on me by Mother Earth, you know? It's actually a moment of like deep release. Like we literally shed once a month and with that we can choose to shed anything that's not serving us. Like any ideas or beliefs or thoughts or relationships or understandings, like you can just let it go and let that time be a moment where you become more sensitive and more intuitive and more connected to nature. Like there's a lot of rituals that um, uh, women just experience so much deeper when they're on their moon and so they actually opt out of not going through it, whether it's a tame mezcal um, and other things like that because it's such a powerful time where you are so, the veil between you and the energy is so much thinner. So learning to see that as like a real superpower and a time um, to rest and quiet down and, and maybe like practice a full day of being alone on the start of your cycle and journaling and like just see it as a time that's actually really sacred and special and um, not a time where you're like, oh, it sucks being a woman, like we have to have this, like no, you're so lucky, like slow down. It's just important to know that like you can cultivate um, your superpower in different weeks. So I actually have my uh, assistant Tyler um, like not book meetings for the week of my period. Um, and the week before my period, we don't make any big decisions because I'm usually like a little bit more angsty and like in a negative headspace. Um, and then when I'm ovulating, like that's the time for brainstorming and group projects. And I mean, both times are good for brainstorming too because there's just different sides of the coin. So um, yeah, I definitely have improved myself <laughs> um, just by learning to work with my natural cycles and not be against them. Okay, a big one that I've learned this year, um, through being very positive, it also comes with a double-edged sword of being very um, optimistic about people and I project onto others when I meet them how I believe that they will be and how I think they're gonna treat me and what I th what type of person I think they are without giving them time to show me who they are and people will literally tell me they're like I'm a shark in business or you can't trust me and they're literally telling you who you are and I'm like oh that's so nice that they told me now they're gonna like like I don't have to worry because they're being so honest with me but like people will tell you who they are and I've learned in my 20s that I need to give people time to show me who they are before I'm creating this projection of who they are so at times I'm like refusing to believe that they could be all these things because I'm like no like if they're like me they're gonna like want what's best for me and they're gonna trust me I mean they're gonna be trustworthy and they're not gonna lie and they're not gonna cheat like before you get committed with people, before you trust and rely on people, let them show up 
for you first. Like you have to have like an interview process, my therapist calls it. Okay, this is one that's like near and dear to my heart because growing up when you're young and you're trying all these new things, whether it's like schools getting you to try all these new sports or new activities or you're learning new things, you're in this energy that it's okay to be a beginner at things and it's okay to be learning and it's we forget that we were bad in the beginning at the things that we're learning and then we get into like adulthood or into our 20s and we feel like we need to be good at things right away and when we're not we get disheartened and we don't do it like we've forgotten this air of like curiosity and childlike learning energy and so the biggest thing i've learned in my 20s that was like seems so small but like I would not try new things because I was worried about being bad at them and people judging me for being bad at them because I was good at so many other things in my life and I learned that one it's okay to be bad at things like you're not there to be good at it you're there to have that experience with your friends or to try something new and oftentimes you'll be surprised how quickly you can learn so I guess what I've learned is it's okay to be a beginner and it's really important in your 20s to still bring that air uh, and that desire to learn and to grow Ooh, I love this next one it is okay to be uncomfortable and massive success and growth lies just outside your comfort zone it's just on the edge it's right there okay you just gotta push a little farther do a little more because honey when you realize your capacity and your capabilities when you are in situations like I used to be really uncomfortable smiling at strangers, but then I made a rule that I had to smile at everyone I made eye contact with. And it's so uncomfortable, but I have made so many friends and had so many beautiful interactions because of that. And I've grown more confident in myself through that. So it's okay to be a little bit uncomfortable and it's great to learn to find solace in the feeling of being uncomfortable. Boundaries. Boundaries are so, 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 so important, okay? You are first. Your mental health, your physical health, your financial health, take care of you. If every person on this planet took responsibility for themselves and took care of themselves, we wouldn't have any problems. It's that we are so reliant on others, we become so codependent. Um, and, and when we're having to rely on others, it's almost like double weight, like it's less energy to take care of your own shit than to put it on others. It's like just double use of energy. So I've been learning a lot about boundaries in my relationships, in my friendships, with work, and prioritizing myself first to make sure that I can fill up my cup and have it overflow onto everyone around me. And I've just found that that has just made every single situation, every relationship, more fun, more stress-free. The thing that I am the most proud of is my self-love. My acceptance of myself. Good, bad, ugly, beginner, expert, constant learner, constant student of life. I just think it is so important, especially in your 20s. The power that I've gained from having self-love and self-acceptance like go hand in hand is so great i can honestly just say i love myself and i mean it's been a few years since i've cultivated this but um books like you can heal your life by louise hay is really helpful with this kind of stuff but it's just going through and reprogramming and understanding that you are good you are worthy of love and by opening yourself up and giving yourself love you're telling the universe that you have the capacity to receive love and it just comes rushing in like when i heard all this when i was first getting spirituality i was like oh my god that sounds so stupid that, like like doesn't work that way but it does it does i'm out on the other end and it totally does so cultivating a self-love practice doing things for yourself doing things to treat yourself and pamper yourself and help make yourself feel like the queen or king that you are um, embodying that energy that you want to become 
you have the power to do that now. And by doing that, you're gonna see the results of that in your relationships, in your life, and in so many different ways. In my 20s, I learned about the power of the universal energy. Call it God, call it creator, call it whatever you want. But there is a divine energy that permeates all things. It is in all of us, it is in every rock, it is in every pillow, it is in every body. And we all come from this same source. There is no hell. The only hell that you can live is the one that you put yourself in on earth through your perspectives and your beliefs. Um, and we can create heaven on earth. And I just, I've learned to develop my relationship with divine energy and through meditation and prayer and journaling. And it's just such a playful, loving energy that is there. And like the entire universe, all of existence loves you. Loves you more than you are capable of understanding. It's like indescribable and it's all for you. And so opening yourself up to feel that and to work with it and to play with it is so fun. And asking God or the universe or the creator like how you can be in service today it leads to some really fun adventures and some really sweet moments. And it's just deepening our connection. It's a return to love. There's another book recommendation to you, Return to Love. Oh my gosh, importance of being your own role model. Okay, ever since I was young, I have looked around. I'm like, you know, I just need to find someone that's like done it right, and I just need to follow them. And this is what school teaches us like to be a follower. I shadowed all the people, I talked to all the people, I read the books, I listened to the podcasts, I watched the YouTube videos, and I kept looking for that person to emulate, to become, to want to aspire to be, to show me the way to become the woman that I wanted. But I clearly had a great idea of the person that I wanted to become because none of these people were exemplifying it. And so I had to become my own role model. I had to be, understand that a lot of my thoughts, a lot of my ideas are on a leading edge. There is no one that has done it the way that I've done it before. And that's a really beautiful thing. And that's true for every single person on this planet. We all have unique skills, unique passions, unique love. Like We're all unique. And so recognizing and the quicker that you can tune into that and strip away the layers of following and serving and understand that like your unique little fire of like creativity and those little whispers that you're hearing that's like meant to push you in the direction of being in alignment with like your true personality so yeah i couldn't find a role model so i became my own and it has like led me on the most incredible adventure i forget it sometimes so i gotta remind myself another thing i learned in my 20s there is no right path right timing for anyone. This is not a race. You are not in front of or behind. We are all acting out different paths. They're all beautiful. They're all right. And recognize that you're not behind. I used to feel like, oh my gosh, I am so behind. Look at this person. They're working all the time and they're making all this money and they've got everything. Like I'm not doing anything. And I'm like, no, you know, this is my path. My path is right. And I have the mantra, um, that my mentor gave to me recently is, I'm me, I'm me, I'm Kristen, I'm me, and I'm different, and that's okay. I can't judge their life, their, their life might be perfect, but I'm me, my life is great for where I'm at now. The most important person to get to know is yourself. Thinking that you have yourself figured out or that you know yourself is like kind of naive because you are going to be learning about who you are for the entirety of your life. We are all just these little awarenesses that are bouncing off of each other and getting that opportunity to reflect on ourselves, to see what that person provoked, to see how that person made us feel. Ultimately, you are just having an experience of yourself, so you need to spend time alone, in silence, journaling, meditating, going for walks, taking yourself out on dates, and get to know you, and get to get so comfortable being 
you and being with you that you would like, I did a whole day of silence just with myself and no distractions and I, I wouldn't even let myself listen to music or watch anything um, I had a journal and a pen that was all I let myself have and at the end of it I was like wow if I had a 12 hour layover and I had nothing to do, I would be happy just being with myself. Like I was ready for like some like like some crazy thing to pop out or like myself to go crazy and I was like, no, like I am happy with just hanging out with myself and getting to know and like seeing what thoughts come up and what quirky ideas I have. So I learned in my 20s how important my relationship uh, to myself is. Tap into the power of positively impacting one person, okay? I know I've talked a lot about self-love and I've talked a lot about getting to know yourself, but my goal, uh, a few years ago, I switched my content from super high entertainment value content <laughs> to um, super positivity impact. I want to help you be more positive. I want to help change your life. I want to help you understand that you are capable of transforming into the being that you desire to be. And um, through that, I have switched my goals to whatever they were in the past, money, numbers, things like that, to my only goal every day is to positively impact one person. That could be with a smile when I go for a walk, that could be through a heartfelt message online, that could be through a phone call, that could be through a stream, that could be through a video like this. If one person watching this right now is feeling a little bit better about themselves, like my job is done. Because I get these stories like still to this day, whether uh, Holly, my editor, who's investing now because I mentioned it briefly on my Instagram story, or a friend of mine, Sheena, who literally her job is like meant to be like a happiness expert at her work and she works towards making fun things for her coworkers to do. She created that job out of watching my stream and like feeling like things were more possible and she wanted to have more positive impact on the world. It is endless how you're able to impact. You're never gonna know exactly how. It's really nice when people come back and share stories for the way that you positively impacted them, but you don't need that. You don't need that, you just need to know <laughs> that you are. Like if a butterfly wing can eventually create a tsunami, like think about if you're positively impacting one person every day, what kind of effect that can have on this world. Smiling and talking to strangers. If a compliment comes up in me, I have to say it, no matter who it is. Even if that person's like super intimidating, I have to tell them that compliment. And uh, it's like super scary. But like I've made people cry so many times and this is where I kind of like get into like my spirituality flow side where it's like that compliment is not for me. It's not for me to receive receive for giving it. It's like it's coming from somewhere so deep in them that I'm seeing this and I'm complimenting it and it's striking the chord in like the just the right way that like they need it. Again, serving universal energy. So when those things come up, those little intuitions, I'm like, I have to do it, even if it's uncomfortable. And now I've elevated that to like, if something to say comes up, like if people are having a conversation, I will interject now and like say something to them and like get involved. And I've been meeting so many people that way. Like I just have the best conversations with like everybody I interact with and um, just be like more open to that and be more comfortable in that space. Another thing I've learned is we create our own realities, okay? The world might be happening, you know, a specific way. This timeline might be happening a specific way, but you take two people that have experienced the exact same thing and they will have totally different stories about it based on the way they were raised, the programming they have, the mood they were in that day, what they ate earlier, uh, if they had a fight with someone that day. Everyone is perceiving the same circumstances so differently. And so one, this can help you not put, pass judgment on people because we are just an accumulation of our environment and our experiences. Two, this allows you to create your own reality. So if you see yourself reacting a certain way to a situation, you can be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, I'm being triggered right now. What is my opposite response? So like if I really am getting angry at Luke and all I want to do <laughs> is keep fighting, right? I'll go and hug him. I'll go and hug him, I'll tell him how much I love him, and all of a sudden, both of our defenses come down, we calm down, and the energy dissipates, and we move forward. But like, my trigger wanted to go me, 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 but I changed my perspective, chose a different path, and it makes such a big difference. So it's like, you control your thoughts, you control your actions, 
Um, and so you can really change your entire reality based on the idea that you can live a good life and the universe is conspiring in your favor and that things are always working out for you. And you start looking for the evidence of what's going right instead of what's going wrong. Power of visualization, law of attraction, sex magic, everything you want is possible. If you have a desire, you have that desire because you have everything you need to make that desire a reality. So, <laughs> get yourself into a meditative state. Visualize something happening. For me, I've done this when I won uh, the Korea events, the night before I meditated and I visualized People coming up to me, telling me, oh my gosh, I can't believe you did that. Getting handed the big check. The most important is like, what are the visuals? What are the sounds? What are the smells? What are people saying to you? Visualize something occurring and then know that you've planted that seed. Move on with your life and keep going. You will be surprised how powerful that is. Um, power of attraction, you get on that vibrating energy that is in alignment with what you want to happen and things will rush to you faster. First step is knowing what you want. When I talk to people and they're telling me they never get what they want, I ask them what they want, they don't know. Make sure you're tuning in to what feels right for you and not feel what feels right for your programming. Um, and then sex magic is a whole other thing. I believe that when we're orgasming, that is the closest we are with God and with spiritual energy. So if you really want to manifest something, you put in a request when you're <laughs> orgasming, you know that you've got like the direct line. Another thing I learned in my 20s, is the importance of good friendships. This is such a big one. There are such things as vampires. They are emotional vampires. They do not know how to fill their own cup and self-love, so they look out at the environment and other people to sink their fangs into and steal all your energy. Like, as I'm saying this, I know you're picturing someone in your life that you know to be an emotional vampire where you just feel drained after. That is not how relationships should go. I have friendships now that we are, we talk to each other, it's like, boom, new idea, boom, new idea, great conversation, energy, power, elevated. I walk out of those friendships and I'm hanging out with them and I like literally feel like I'm like vibrating. I want people that will show me their soul and I can show mine. I don't want people who I can trust, who love me, who are inspired, who are on their path of alignment or if they're not, you know, they are just like, uh, I don't know, just like still just taking care of themselves and loving me, celebrating each other is possible. If you have toxic friendships or relationships in your life right now, I used to have a few and honestly, I just like, I, you can you can just like slowly hang out with them less or a couple of my friends, I went to them and I said, listen, like I'm really working on like my mental health. I'm working on like cultivating more abundance and positivity in my life. Like I just need to take a break from this friendship because like every time we talk, it's like super negative. Like it's just draining me a lot. I need to focus on me. And like they were super offended when I did it. And I was like, oh shit, I made a mistake. But then like three months later, I'd get a call and they're like, hey, like what you said was totally true. Like I would love to learn how to be a more positive person. <laughs> Are there any books you recommend? And I'm like, and now we're great friends. Like it worked out. It's also okay to just slowly stop hanging out with the people that ultimately don't want you to become your best self. Like some people want you to stay with them in their trauma or in their pain. And that's just not what we're about, guys. Even though I can sit here and tell you all the things that I've learned in my 20s, I <laughs> still have no idea what the fuck I'm doing daily, moment to moment. No idea. Is this right? Is this wrong? This feels exciting. Oh wait, it's not exciting anymore. Is this the right way to handle things? I don't know. I don't know. So everyone you look around in your life, adults just get better at faking like they made it. Does that make sense? The more adults I talk to, they have no idea. And that's okay. That's okay. Adapt the quality of being a student of life you don't have to have things figured out. Some days you can feel like things are figured out, some days you're not, and that's okay. You're human, and this is all part of the human experience. So I think it's just important in this sense to be curious, be a lifelong learner, be open for your opinions to change. And I'm gonna leave it with a question that uh, Tim Ferriss uses on his podcast. If you're going through something right now, think about that situation, think about yourself, and ask, what would this look like 
if it was fun, easy, and filled with grace. And visualize that step by step. This can go for healing past traumatic experiences by visualizing them and rewriting them and revisualizing them as if they had gone fun, easy, and filled with grace. This can go for visualizing future experiences. It is such a phenomenal tool. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, you clicked on this video, you watched till the end, like, you're freaking ready, honey. We are leveling up. Make sure to spank that like button. Make sure to subscribe. Make sure to check out my social media. I'm very active on my Instagram stories. I love interacting with you guys, and I'm so excited to take you on this journey. Just know that I see you. I love you. You are so worthy of all of the abundance, all of the incredible experiences. I want you to take three deep breaths right now and visualize that question of what would this look like if it was easy, fun, and filled with grace? What would I look like if I was easy, fun, and filled with grace? All right, I love you guys. I'll see you on the next video. Bye.